In this kit review we're going to take a look at this, Revels the Baron and his fun digger Fogger. G'day, I'm Dan, welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench and to a model kit review. And today we're going to be looking at this, which is Revels the Baron and his fun digger Fokker, which is um, part of a Deals Wheels set. It's a nice colourful box art. Revel, of course, aren't strangers to this sort of caricature type model kits. They had a few kits out in the 1970s, which I used to sort of really lust after um, in the catalogue But uh, as a kid. But unfortunately, I never ever saw them uh, in the store or, um, or actually ever built even. So I don't know whether they didn't get to Australia or they were really popular and got snapped up, but uh, I just never saw them. So when I saw this kit online on eBay, I thought, well, I've got to grab it and... Uh, now I'm going to stop the video right here because uh, as you'll see later on in this video I actually discovered that the copyright on the mouldings for this kit was 1971 and that certainly seemed consistent with my memories as a kid because I seem to remember seeing this kit in a Revel catalogue around 1974-75 but what threw me off the um, trail was when I went to Scalemates I saw that the kit was released in 2016 and they did have mention of it being a new box in 2007, but you can see there's nothing there about an earlier version. Yet when you look at the 2007 box, you can see it says Rebel Old School, greatest kits of all time. So clearly this kit did exist previously and Rebel have been reissuing it a number of times. So when I went and did a bit of a search on Google, just looking at some images, as you can see here, um, I did find the box that I've got, but I also found some earlier versions of it as well. So clearly it has come from the 1970s. And that started me thinking that I could recall also seeing another kit in the catalog that was also part of this series. And uh, eventually I found it, and it's this one here, which is Lucky Pierre, which was the uh, little French aviator flying a Newport. And this was the uh, kit to oppose the Red Baron, of course, in his five wing fun decker. Now this kit unfortunately the Lucky Pierre one hasn't been reissued so we can only hope that at some point um, Revel will find the moulds for that and reissue it because that'd be nice to have the companion kit for it. Um, but there you go so it is in fact an old kit and uh, it looks like at least in this case um, Scalmates doesn't have all the information on this particular one. But anyway let's get back to the video. So let's have a look around the box. First of all, obviously some uh, very colourful um, drawing there and artwork. Um, clearly we're supposed to be Baron von Richthofen and suspiciously, if you can see it there, there looks to be a famous little beagle who's just been shot off his doghouse. Um, quite cheeky the way they've done that, but yeah, you can see he's there. Um, it's ages 12 plus. Looking on the sides, we can see it's got some features, so the length is just over 6 inches, it's got 50 parts moulded in red and includes some water slide decals. Um, it's supposed to feature 5 wings, because a tri-decal wouldn't obviously be enough for the Baron, uh, movable propeller and spoke wheels. It also includes a chrome 426 cubic inch V8 with air scoop and if that's not enough he's also got a rotary engine on top of that. So you actually can see it there, there's the uh, piston engine, there's the rotary engine in front. So this thing should go pretty good. Um, also includes the uh, Baron Von Rott, Red Baron pilot figure. Over this side we've got a list of the colours that you're going to need, which is pretty standard sort of colours for a kit like this. So we've got black, copper, flat black, flesh, grey, silver and wood. Interestingly enough, it doesn't say red, which you would have thought it should. Um, Okay, the side art there is very much the same as the top. On this side we've got some photographs of the completed model which looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so I really like looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Underneath we've got a list of the various skill levels. So this was a level 4, so this is intended for ages 12 to 14 years. Uh, the kit will require glue and paint and can feature up to 120 pieces. So there we go, and they're estimating the build time to be five plus hours. So let's open up the kit and see what we get inside. Okay, well we've got some very bright red plastic there. I guess that's why they figured you didn't need to get some uh, red paint because it's already 
pre molded in a nice bright red. Ah, good. We do get some chrome pieces. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this um, chrome, but uh, I think given the nature of the kit, that'll be really good. And obviously, some instructions at the bottom. Uh, it's an open top box, which is good because we can leave the parts in it. box is very flimsy though, so it won't last very long once you open the kit up. Alright, let's have a look at the instructions first and then we'll look at the parts. Okay, so we've got a nice little uh, cartoon illustration there on the front. Um, looks like the Baron's getting another award. Probably for shooting down that beagle, I'd imagine. Um, some typical sort of cautions and things like that about uh, working with kits. Okay, inside and we've got some decals. Let's have a quick look at those. Interestingly enough, we've got three dog houses for kill marks, which is interesting. Um, copyright on these decals is 2016, so this is indeed a fairly recent kit. This is um, September 2017 I'm recording this. The decals look a bit funny. There's a bit of, I don't know if that's showing up, but there's a little bit of a, a mark on them there. I'm not sure what that is, but they should be okay. But my my feeling is they're going to be translucent, so probably going to have to make sure we put some white paint underneath where they go so that they look okay. So looking at the instructions themselves, you can see um, not just not your typical Revel instructions. We've got some call-outs from the Baron himself and uh, some rather nice, interesting sort of uh, illustrations there of the assembly sequence. As you can see, the assembly is pretty straightforward. There isn't a lot of parts in this kit. The fun in this one's going to be in the painting, I think. So we've got the two fuse large halves, one of the wings, lower wings, uh, the real elevators, and then we move on to part two, where we do the der holder upper thing. <laughs> and basically that's the, uh, the undercarriage there, as you can see. Uh, nice touch there. We've got a bandage on one of the wheels because it's obviously got a slow leak. Then we grew, move across to decision time. So one or two engines. So that's interesting. So you get the option to install either just the rotary engine, or if you prefer, you can go for the rotary along with the V8 piston engine combination. So that's kind of cool that you can choose which one of those you want. And then down the bottom, we're sort of getting close to final assembly already. So we're basically putting on the exhaust manifolds and some other bits and pieces there. And then in step five, we're putting on some wings and some overhead machine guns on top of the wings. And then probably what's going to be one of the more interesting steps, which is actually getting all the wings, because there is five of these things, getting these all together. Uh, that could be rather fun. Um, and then we've got the last step here, which is actually putting together the Baron himself and popping him into the cockpit. So the assembly sequence is going to be pretty straightforward. Any, any model that's had any experience at all putting kits together should, uh, shouldn't have any trouble with that. Obviously, as long as the part fit is good, this also is probably going to lend itself really well to being a kit for younger modelers, which I'm sure was one of the intentions when they uh, designed it. So let's have a look at the parts. Okay, so all the red parts come in the one bag, which has been... Uh, Heat sealed there on the end. As you can probably tell just from the sound of that, they're fairly lightweight pieces. Um, this isn't going to win any awards for mold quality, I don't think, but that's probably okay because it's not really the sort of kit that needs to worry about that. Um, so we're looking at what looks to be part of the engine here, I'd say. Um, Interestingly enough, even though it's a relatively new kit, there is a little bit of flash on some of the parts, so a little bit of cleanup is going to be required. Parts are all nicely numbered though, so we can identify what they are. Wheels, spokes are open, which is nice, so they'll look really good when they're painted up. Uh, there is even a little bit of detail on the propellers. You can see the metal ends there on top of the wooden propellers, which is nice. Uh, if we have a look at the wheel there, you can see the patch repair that's been done on it. We also have the caricature of the Baron himself, which is in two parts, so that's going to require a little bit of cleanup. That's not too bad. A little bit of painting, a little bit of creative thinking about how to do that. That should look fine, actually. That's not bad at all. Main fuselage is 
horribly out of scale for the real plane, but hey, we've got five wings, so you know we're not worrying about that. But really quite in a cool shape to it though. I really like that. I think that'll look good. And there's some of our wings. Again, bit of flash, so a little bit of cleanup's going to be required on some of these parts. I'm not seeing any sinkholes or any other sort of great problems. The quality of this is actually a little bit ordinary, I have to say, uh, for a new one. So you're going to have to, if you're really fussed about that sort of thing, you might have to go over these and just give them a light sand and uh, get rid of some of the minor blemishes on them. I don't think it really matters given the type of um, kit it is, but yeah, it, you know, actually maybe it does. That's a little bit rough there, to be honest. So yeah, it might need a little bit of sanding before you uh, prime it and paint it. Ah, that's interesting. It's made in China, so that could explain why some of it looks a little bit ordinary. Uh, they've even got the name of the company that's making it for them. Oh, here we go. So that, now, Scalemate said this kit was from 2006, I think it was. Um, but actually, looking at the copyright notice in here, it says copyright 1971 Rebel Monogram. So this is in fact an older kit. I don't know whether it originally was a Revel kit or a monogram kit. We'll have to see if we can find out. They've obviously modified the uh, copyright notice because now it's got made in China and certainly the original moulds would never have been made in China. But that could explain to some degree why this looks a little bit rough on some of the edges out on, on the outside here. Um, these kits, when they first came out in the 60s and 70s, were extremely popular, particularly with younger modelers. And at that time, the hobby was extremely popular with with younger people in general. So they did get a good run, but relatively short run because uh, after a while, people sort of lost interest in these sort of kits, and so the kit manufacturers stopped making as many of them uh, for a number of years. And uh, so a lot of these molds got a bit of a break, but. This goes a long way to explaining why there is a few signs of wear on it because it is an older kit. Now I said on this side there's no injection pin markings or anything like that, but uh, we'll make up for it with the underside where there is quite a few. And there's even some, I don't know, it looks like there might have been some repairs done at some point to the mold. So yeah, there's gonna, gonna have to be a little bit of tidying up I'm afraid if you wanna make this kit look nice. Um, so a bit of work to be done on the wing surfaces there. All right, moving on to some more wings. Um, again, same thing. We're looking at the underside here and there are ejection pin markings on the, on the wings. So you're going to have to clean them up if you don't want them to be visible. I don't know why they would do this, but they've put the copyright notice on the, uh, oh, actually, okay, 1971. So this would have been original. This actually would have had the copyright notice there. That was something that was done in the 70s but they've updated it because they've put China on it. So you would thought if they're going to go to the trouble of doing that, why not just get rid of that one altogether? Because uh, all you know, most models are going to do, of course, is sand that off. Uh, top of the wings. Yeah, a little bit rough in some spots. Again, just a light sand just to sort of smooth them out a bit, but not too bad. Nice little detail there. We have actually a patch on the wing as well where it's obviously uh, had a hole in it. That's quite nice. So not too bad there. Let's have a look at the chrome. This is a piece that I'm really interested in because uh, I know a lot of modelers don't like this chrome, but I think for this particular kit, it's perfect, particularly the, uh, the helmet for the Baron. So I was really keen to see how well this had come out. Uh, first impressions, pretty good actually. They did pack this part separately, which is nice, so it hasn't been scratched by uh, bouncing around in the box with the other parts of the kit. Unfortunately, right on top of his helmet, the chrome hasn't quite come out properly on this particular kit. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of a blemish just on the top. I'm not going to let that worry me, because I do like the finish overall. Um, and the points to actually cut his helmet off there are actually not in bad spots should be reasonably easy to actually patch them up. So that's pretty good. Chrome exhaust, the engine there looks nice. The front of the engine there, the car engine cover, that uh, that looks good too, but again, a little bit of wear on it. So it looks like, yeah, looking at that, because they put this chrome piece 
at the bottom of the box, I think it still suffered a little bit of wear from the uh, red plastic pieces moving on top of it during shipping and uh, storage. So that's a bit of a shame, but it's not it's not horrible. I, I would personally, I would just live with it. I think it'd be okay. Um, flash wise, yeah, there is a bit of flash about the same as what there is in some of the other parts of the kit, although these look to be better. But overall, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, this is just a fun little kit anyway, so, you know, it's no point getting too concerned about it. But I think there's, yeah, I think the chrome's fine and it should, should look good on the kit. So there you go. That's really all there is to say about uh, this kit. This is the uh, Baron and his Fundecker Fokker. Looks like it was actually a 1970s kit, which is what I suspected in the first place. So I might have to do a bit more research and see if I can find the original uh, release of this kit. But it looks like a fun little kit. It's one I'm hoping to build and put on video as well so you can follow along with my adventures in building this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.